Check. Oh, hi. You're doing this to yourself. Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be answering what is probably my most asked question ever, which is what watercolors would I recommend most for beginners? There are a lot of things I want to cover in this video, but first I wanted to let you know how I kind of rank watercolors. Some people are of the opinion that when you first get started you should buy the highest quality paint that you can in maybe just a few number of colors so that you're learning on professional paints, while there's also the idea that you should buy student grade paints, buy something cheaper, just in case you're not even sure if you're going to like watercolors. For myself personally, I tend to rank watercolors into one of three categories. Paints that get in your way, paints that don't get in your way, and paints that shine on their own. And I'm kind of listing those in increasing quality. So paints that get in your way are paints that are of a low enough quality that they're actually going to hinder your learning and obstruct you from understanding how watercolors work. So you might give up on them before you've even given them the chance to show you what they can do. Paints that don't get in your way are kind of the perfect place to learn. These are paints that may not necessarily have incredible features or granulation or something that makes the paints super super special on their own, but you can learn on them. You can do everything you need to do to discover watercolors and learn the fundamental basics of how the paints work. Paints that shine on their own are going to be usually your high tier professional paints. They'll cost more when you first get them, but they're really special and there's just something really unique and luxurious about them. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be referring to paints in the middle category, paints that don't get in your way. At the end of this video, I'll also mention some ones that do get in your way, sets that beginners are often drawn to, but that I would not recommend if you're just getting started or if you're learning about watercolors. Before we talk about paint, which is obviously the main purpose of this video, I want to briefly talk about some other materials that can kind of make or break your paint game, because even really awesome, excellent, high quality paint is going to struggle to produce good results on bad paper and with the wrong pencils. So I want to very briefly touch on my top paper recommendations as well as some pencils that I like to pair with my watercolor paintings. So let's quickly talk about pencils. When it comes to general sketching, your normal graphite pencil is going to be just fine. I really like mechanical pencils, and for sketching, these black wings are really nice, if a bit more expensive. But when I'm actually working on something that I want to be the undersketch for a watercolor painting, I tend to do one of two things. I tend to either use these colored pencils. These are the Prismacolor Cola Race colored pencil. This is a Verithin, which I really like the texture of on a paper, but it's not erasable like these guys. I like the colored pencils because they don't smudge when you paint over them like graphite can do. So these are actually really nice and super handy to have when you're doing like under sketches for something that will be a watercolor painting, but the graphite can be made a little bit more usable if you don't smudge your line if you don't have an issue with that. And even when I use my colored pencil, I always want to have a kneaded eraser around because I'll use that to gently lighten my sketch after I've done it, but before I paint. And when you're working on watercolor paper, you don't necessarily want to erase with a standard eraser like this guy because you're going to be rubbing that on your paper, which can damage the texture of your paper before you even get to painting. But if you use a kneaded eraser like this, how does this thing even open? Oh my goodness. If you use a kneaded eraser like this guy, oh boy, this is fun. I could just do this all day. Woo -hoo -hoo. Anyway, if you use a kneaded eraser like this, you can kind of just gently rub at your paper without disturbing the paper too much and you can lighten your sketch at the same time. So the combination of a good colored pencil that's kind of erasable, they're not entirely erasable, but it's good, a uh, combination of a colored pencil and a kneaded eraser is usually really nice for me for prepping watercolor paintings. When it comes to paper and you're first getting started, the Canton XL Mixed Media Pad is actually really, really nice because it's cheap. And 
it's a sketchbook. It's a cheap sketchbook that you can paint in. I use it a lot for swatches and sketches, and it's the sketchbook that I always go to when I'm looking to test out my handmade watercolors as I'm making them. I always have one of these next to me so I can swatch out the color as I go. It does warp a bit with a lot of water, and you may find that the colors lift when you're doing lots of layers, so it's not great for super detailed or watercolor paintings you're planning to spend a lot of time on, but if you're just looking for a sketchbook that you can learn in, I really like these, and they're cheap. In that vein, Canton also has a watercolor paper that, again, is good for swatching and learning and things like that, but it is a cellulose paper, so it's not made of cotton, which means that it's not going to hold the watercolor as well. It's not going to keep the color on the paper as nicely as a cotton paper will. Once you start discussing cotton watercolor paper, what happens is that the price goes up. Here are a couple of cotton papers that I just grabbed off my shelf that I would recommend. And like I said, while a good watercolor paint is going to take you really far, you will be You'll be shut down before you even get started if you start with a bad paper. So while good quality cotton papers aren't necessarily super cheap, I do think that this is a good place to invest is in your paper. If you just want to learn about color mixing and swatching and see how watercolors feel, grab that Canton XL watercolor paper or the mixed media pad and that's going to be a great place to learn. But when you're ready to experiment with actual pieces and those supplies just aren't doing it for you anymore, if there's one place where you're going to upgrade and invest, I would say paper is the place to do that. I am a little bit ashamed to say that I actually almost forgot to talk about brushes too. So I have a couple different set options here that are relatively inexpensive. Brushes may arguably also be the kind of thing that it's nice to invest in if you can, but these options are relatively affordable, so I want to talk about some sets and then a couple of individual brushes. These are calligraphy brushes from blueheronarts.com. This is a three brush set and the three brushes is $15. So you're going to get three brushes for five dollars each basically and you've got a large soft brush that will do bigger washes this one is also large but it's a bit stiffer so you can do slightly smaller detail work and then this little guy is fantastic for details i use this brush all the time and it's very very soft this set over here these are princeton real value brushes i specifically got these to work with gouache they're synthetic brushes so if you're not interested in using natural hair brushes because these are made out of animal fiber Fibers, then you can just get a cheap synthetic set. And these Princeton Real Value brushes are not bad. I really like that the sets usually come with a variety of sizes. You're not going to get super fine points in some of these round brushes, but there's also, if I can find it, this Royal Langnickel synthetic brush set, and those round brushes have really nice points to them. I still use those a lot, especially for gouache, but they can work for watercolors too. If you found yourself looking for just one brush to invest in, my top recommendation would probably be these silver black velvet brushes. I personally tend to use round brushes a lot. This one is a size 8 and this one is a size 14, and I found that even the size 14 when wet comes to a really nice fine point. So even if you got something like a size 8 or even just something in between here like a size 10, you could do a lot with just one of these round brushes. They're really juicy and they hold a ton of water, so one brush in sort of a medium to kind of large size is going to allow you to do larger washes, but also they come to really nice fine points, so you can do finer details with these as well. If you wanted to in invest in just one nicer, more expensive brush, that would be around the cost of one of the sets with multiple brushes. And now we're ready to talk about watercolors. I have four-ish, three or four different specific brands, specific sets of watercolors that I want to recommend to you guys today, and I'm going to go in order from my least favorite to my most favorite. Now I'm not saying these are my most favorite sets of all time, I do really enjoy them, but they're definitely ones that if somebody said, hey, I want to get into watercolors, I don't want to spend a lot of money, where should I start, what would you recommend? These are going to be my go-to recommendations. 
Starting at the bottom, we have the Paul Rubens watercolors. If you haven't seen my review video for these paints, I'll go ahead and link that up in the iCard. I really, really enjoy this set overall. 24 colors is the maximum number that I would recommend to someone who's just getting started. It's definitely way more than you need. I think you could get started with as few as six colors, and 12 is a very nice comfy place to be. So 24, when you're first getting started, really should feel like a luxury. Paul Rubens also makes a 12 color set, but when I did a bit of research I found that the two blues included in this set are both technically warmer blues. There's an ultramarine and a Payne's Gray, so without the inclusion of a cooler blue like a Thalo blue, I can't wholeheartedly recommend the 12 color set. The paints themselves are of a really nice quality, but I would definitely recommend when you're first getting started that you want to at least have a warm and cool of each of the primary colors. So a cool and a warm yellow, a cool and a warm red and the same thing a cool and a warm blue. Even if all you had was those six colors, it's going to be enough to teach you a ton of information about color mixing, and then as you learn about paints you can slowly incorporate more convenience colors. I really like the presentation of this particular set, and the metal tin is nice to paint in. The next recommendation is actually more of a range of watercolors, an overall brand than one particular set, and that's the Prima Marketing watercolors. I'm sure you guys have seen lots of reviews and lots of videos all over YouTube about these paints. And while these are generally geared a little bit more towards crafters, watercolor artists and painters have been enjoying these sets as well. I myself have the Decadent Pies set, which is a bit earthier and mixes more desaturated colors, but I know that other artist friends of mine also really enjoy the Classic set and the Tropical set. It's a nice 12 color set with lots of different variety and the color palettes. If you're just getting started, I would recommend either the Tropical set or the Classics, just so you know you're gonna have the colors that you need to get started without being too confused by having just a bunch of convenience colors that don't actually teach you a ton about mixing. And they're pretty affordable as well. So next we have the watercolors that sit in my top slot, the most recommended for beginners, but we have an honorable mention at the end too, so stick around for that. So coming in at number one are the White Knights slash Sonnet watercolors. And while White Knights and Sonnet are made by the same company, they're not the same. I am kind of grouping them together for a specific reason though, so let me explain. I really, really love my White Knights watercolors, and these days it's probably the set that I grab first. I originally started by picking out some custom colors that I wanted in a palette, and I enjoyed them so much that I ended up getting the larger 36 color set as a gift, actually. And while I would love to just recommend the 12 color White Knight set to you just as it is, I kind of can't quite do that, even though the price point is nice, and the paints are nice, and the color selection is pretty decent. The primary reason that I can't just recommend the 12 color set that you can buy online for White Knights is the palette that the set comes in is pretty unusable for a lot of people. It's not super functional, the layout can kind of impede your access to the paints, and the mixing trays are not super easy to get to. While you can do what I did and build your own custom set of watercolors, either through Jackson's website or you can go on eBay, there are sellers who sell individual full pans of the watercolors, which is another thing I really like about White Knights, is that you can buy larger quantities of paint, meaning you can get them in tubes, which obviously you can get a lot of watercolors in tubes, but the sets come in full pans, which is really, really nice. If you did want to build a custom set, here are some colors I would recommend that you could get started with if you if you were going to build your own set. But I know that can be kind of confusing for beginners trying to decide what colors you need and not really being sure, which is why I also have the Sonnet watercolors on the list. Sonnet is the student brand accompaniment to the professional White Knights watercolors. And with these paints, that 24 color set, I think there's a 16 color set as well, and they're not too expensive, pretty affordable, and you're still getting those big full pans. The big difference between the White Knights watercolors and the Sonnet watercolors, as far as I can tell, is that the Sonnet watercolors, that student brand, is made with pigments that aren't as light fast. So they're using cheaper pigments so they can give you a set at a lower price. This may seem like a big drawback to some people, but when you're first getting started, it's very, very possible that a lot of the work you're doing is either going to be one, just for yourself and not sold, or two, in your sketchbook. And if your work is in a sketchbook, it's not really going to be exposed to the light that 
often. So light fastness isn't as big of an issue. Because as a reminder, we're talking about art supplies for beginners here, not necessarily my most favorite watercolors of all time. I have done a video about that, but to be honest, the list has changed since I made that video. I've kind of been finding the ones that I use most often and the things that I like the most, so I'm probably going to have to do some form of update on that one. On to our honorable mention, which is a little bit of a special thing. It's, hold on, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab it. So a set that kind of doesn't necessarily make the list, but I think is definitely worthy of noting in this video are these Russian aqua colors by St. Petersburg watercolors. Not the same company that makes the White Knights and Sonnet watercolors. And you may have seen the review video where I compared Sonnet to these aqua color paints, and I really liked both of them. The aquacolor paints are also kind of in full pans, but it seems to be a bit of a custom size. They're a little bit smaller than a standard full pan, and they're not filled all the way to the top, but they're super, super affordable, so I can't not mention them here. And they definitely fall into the category of paints that do not get in your way. If this was all you had, 24 colors is more than enough. The color selection is pretty nice, and they're fun to work with. That being said, I personally don't really use this set anymore. I have some watercolors that I prefer, and I don't really want to just sit on these watercolors and have them sit back there on a shelf. So I'm doing a tiny little mini giveaway for the people who have watched the video, oh my goodness that's loud, up to this point. If you would like to win this slightly gently used set of aquacolor watercolors, all you have to do is... How do we want to do this giveaway? Hmm... You can follow the link down in the description to enter and I will select the winner and they will be contacted by me in one week. So next Thursday, the Thursday after the publishing of this video, which well, here's the date. This is when the giveaway will end. It's open worldwide, international, no matter where you live, you can enter just uh, follow the link down there for a chance to uh, win the set because I have it, but I don't need it. So you guys can have it. And before we go, we definitely have to talk about some watercolor sets that I would not recommend to beginners. This isn't in every case because the paints are bad, it's just sets that I don't think are a good place to start. Starting with the most obvious category, and that's sets with too many colors. I have a couple of sets that have been sent to me over the past year at some point to show to you as an example. And while these sets can be really, really fun to work with, especially if you're a crafter and you make things like watercolor greeting cards and you want to have lots of different colors to play with, and even if you've already started to learn the basics of watercolors and you're just looking for something new and fresh and something that's fun to play with, these sets could definitely fall into that category. But if you're brand new and you're just getting started, I wouldn't recommend these because with having so many colors, that's really the grab. That's what they're trying to sell to you with these paints. So you're going to have a decrease in quality for an increase in quantity. And they're really just trying to sell you a big set with lots of colors and it's supposed to be shiny and, and fancy and something that you want to buy. But the truth is it could actually kind of impede you from learning about the basics and color mixing when you have so many things right in front of you. It can be really overwhelming. Another set that it may be surprising to you that I do not recommend to beginners is actually the Kuratake Ganzai Tambi paints. Now, as you guys may know, I love these watercolors. I love to use them. They're a lot of fun, but they're not traditional watercolors. These are Ganzai paints, which means that they're made differently. The binder that's used is different and there's a glue element to them as well. So they don't work the same as more standard gum Arabic based watercolors. This means that the colors get muddy and mixes faster and they lift easier when you're layering. They're meant to lift easy because it's a technique that's commonly used in paintings with Gonzai, but when it comes to trying to paint with them like they're regular watercolors or something that watercolor artists are more used to, they may give you more trouble than it's worth when you're first getting started and learning. That being said, I love them as long as you don't approach them as wanting them to be the same as other watercolors. The final set that I don't really recommend is something that I have talked about some on this channel before, and that would actually be the Winsor & Newton Cotman paints. 
I'm just not a big fan of them. While I know they're very popular and some people really, really love them and they can be okay for learning on, I found the tinting strength to be really, really variable. Like some colors like Thalo Blue are really strong, while other colors you have to really, really, really scrub at the pans to get any paint up. I find that that imbalance and the overall lower tinting strength of the paints can actually make learning a little bit more difficult. I know that not everyone will share these opinions, but that's why I'm making this video, just to be another person whose thoughts can be out there and you can make the most informed decision possible. And that's that, my most recommended watercolor sets slash brands for beginners. Please do let me know down in the comments if you have tried any of these paints or if there's something completely different that I haven't mentioned that you would recommend for beginners. I didn't include a ton of high tier professional paints because I didn't want the cost to be super high for a beginner. If you guys are interested in my top recommended brands of professional watercolors, I kind of already did a video about that, but like I said, it's out of date, so maybe we can think of a way to put a new spin on something like that so I can talk to you about professional brands. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope that you have enjoyed it, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. This is the most I've ever, this is the closest I've come to dancing my whole life. Bye guys.